Good morning and welcome back everyone. I'm out here at COSI, joined with Alyssa and there's a lot going on over here. What do we have lined up? Yeah Liz, well we are getting ready to showcase our new King Tut exhibit coming in just under two weeks and I thought what a better thing to do than make paper like the ancient Egyptians did. Oh, I like so that. So let's just get right on in here. What we're gonna need to do is take some paper. I have just brown paper bags. Mm -hmm. It's easiest to just cut the bottom off that bag. Excellent. And then you can open your bag up. And then you can either cut down the middle and cut it in strips or I like to just cut strips while it's mm. folded over because that. And you get twice as many for exactly. half the work. Exactly. So in ancient Egypt, they didn't have strips of paper bags. They used a plant called papyrus. Mm. And it was a reed that grew in the Nile and in marshy areas. And so they would cut the edges of the stalk off and then cut really thin strips of the oh. inside of the stalk like this, and they would put it in water for about a week. So we're going to do something similar. We're going to, instead of just water, we're going to add some Elmer's glue to this. So Liz, if you wanna pour the entire bottle in there, you, if it's easier, you can just take the cap off. That may be a little faster. I'm gonna follow your lead on that. So all you need here is an equal amount of glue and water one little tub of this glue is about half a cup of water. So we already pre-staged this with half a, half a cup of water and are adding half a cup of glue. Once that's mostly in there, it doesn't have to be exact. We'll stir that up. Excellent. And so we have to do this because our paper bags don't have any sugar in them, but the papyrus plant did. So that is how they got all these strips to stick together. Mm, okay. So you can just okay. give that a good stir. Now they let their reed strips sit in the water for about a week. We're going to go for a second or so. I, I like this idea. That sounds much more efficient. Yeah, it'll be a Here little quicker. At least mostly mixed in, I think. Yeah, and so you can cut these strips as long or as short as you want for the size of paper that you want to make. Oh, excellent. And then what you're going to do is just dip them in this mixture. Just glue in water so we're not worried about anything. Get some of the excess off, and you want to lay it on a piece of wax paper. Okay. And this will be so that we can get it off once it's dried. Let's get them nice and submerged. Yeah, perfect. You can wring some of the excess off if you want, but it doesn't really matter. I feel like it's so almost determining how messy it is. Exactly. <laughs> you want a little messier project or a little cleaner project? You can do whatever you like. And the Egyptians would put one layer of strips out horizontally, and then once they were happy with that, they would lay the next layer vertically, or vice versa. Okay. So once, once you do this at home, you could have a whole set of strips, but right now I'm just gonna go over mine in a horizontal way, now that I already did the vertical strips. I like that, but, and the, is the important thing just making sure it all overlaps? Yep, you just want it to overlap so you don't have any holes once your paper is done. Okay. Oh, I like this a lot. It's okay. a good fun activity. You can do it inside, you can do it outside if you want to, you know, save the mess for <laughs> not your kitchen. I like how Take it outside. every age can do this too. This is where I think yeah. even my toddler age nieces could really have a lot of fun with this. Exactly. And so once you're happy with this, Here we go. you're just going to let it dry overnight. And then, then the next morning, the next day, you're going to peel it off the wax paper and you'll have your very own papyrus. That's so cool. Now you can make them different sizes. This is one I made the other day. Oops. And I actually went online and Googled some hieroglyphs and made this spell out cosi. Now it's not an exact <laughs> translation, of course, but you can grab some crayons, you can grab some markers, you can Google some hieroglyphs for an added challenge or just color away on your papyrus and share your artwork. I like that. And I like that even looking up things like the hieroglyphs can even add a little more to that excitement since it doesn't sound like many places are going to be able to see this King Tut exhibit, especially here in the country this year. Yeah, we are so excited to be hosting it. Like I said, it'll start a week from Saturday. 
you can get your tickets online at cosi.org. Be sure to get them in advance because, like you said, it's going to be very popular and we're really excited to share it with everyone. Oh, I can't wait to see it. It sounds like it's going to be a great exhibit. And again, remember COSI.org. That's where you can look into the coming and going exhibits here at COSI, reserve those tickets in advance, or to go over this fun experiment and just how long it may take to, for all this to dry, you can let, head over to our website, nbc4i.com. So thanks again. Thanks, Liz.